Hello and welcome. This is TV1 News coming to you live from PNG's capital, Port Mosby. I'm Salome Vincent. In this edition, Registry of Political Parties sets theme for 2017, another victim of police brutality speaks out, and ex-hunters clarify social media post. Dr. Gelu is warning the public to be wary of groups such as Paradise Kingdom claiming to be registered political parties. He clarified that they may be registered associations but not political parties. These groups are conducting public forums, speaking about their policies and to some extent soliciting money from the people. I would like to inform the people of this country that Paradise Kingdom is not a registered political party. It may be a registered association, but not as a political party. So whatever dealings that party is doing, or whatever dealings that particular group is doing, called Paradise Kingdom, they have to stop immediately, because if there are complaints that comes out from this, then you know the registry would not hesitate uh, to refer this particular group to the authorities. There is a high level of concern for sea piracy for many maritime provinces, including New Island. Provincial Police Commander Chief Inspector John Meady said the province does not have the capacity to engage a full operation into sea piracy issues, but it is something that he would very much like to see happen for the province. PPC Meady said police in New Island had a recent scare when a family traveling from Manus ran out of fuel and were stranded on Tingwan Island in New Island waters, but were rescued. Some travelers from Musau Island faced similar problems as well on Christmas Day when traveling to the mainland, but reached land in safety. PPC Midi said situations like these leave travelers vulnerable to pirates, and many cases of attacks by sea pirates and missing people have yet to get closure. He said he would like to set up the province's water police because they have been getting reports from the concerned public and even victims of pirate attacks, but don't have the capacity to engage in full operations. Sea piracy has been reported in the seas of Alotau, Morobe, Medang and recently along the Sipic River. Police Minister Robert Atiafa said during a parliament sitting in 2016 that the police water unit is not functioning because of funding shortfalls. Meantime, New Island Province has so far reported only one major crime during the festive period. Provincial Police Commander Chief Inspector John Meady said a man was murdered by two others during a drunken brawl on Lavongai Island in New Hanover. Most of what has been reported are alcohol-related incidences, including 73 arrests for drugs and homebrew consumption and production. PPC Midi said reports are still coming in from some of the six police station commands in the province. There could be other crimes committed during the festive season. 48-year-old Matthias Tio of Pangia, who resides at Morata, is yet another victim of police brutality. Matthias spoke to TV1 News today, painfully recounting the events of that fateful night. This is Matthias Theo, father of 17, who unfortunately fell victim to unruly police officers at around 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve at Morata in the nation's capital. Matthias says he was shot in the face with tear gas, the canister damaging the lower part of his face, resulting in 18 stitches. I uh, Koi, Koi saw me walk over to go down to check him. Oh, then old monkey blew me crowd play cars in a horse shop. So, me son of story law. The son of story now bless up. This is a guess one way of blame. A brook blew me in a rock smoke the skin blew me come down. He claimed that four unmarked ten sitters with no number plates drove into the neighborhood and fired warning shots. Mr. Tio Feather says the reason why police reacted in such brutal manner towards unarmed civilians is not known. I'm giving Shaker's first warning shot long. All Tari, he got shot on the mainland. They talk about the mainland. Then we were looking at the center, we were coming down now. Now 
time was on Monday, Monday, and police him to go. A formal complaint is yet to be laid as he was unable to do so on Monday, 2nd of January 2017, due to the standoff between police and the defense force. He was advised to return on a later date and says he will still lodge a complaint for the police hierarchy to take action against the officers responsible. Carolyn Ure, TV1 News. Stories of police brutality are many, but the outcomes of investigations continue to lurk in the shadows, says Napoleon Rema, brother of the late Andrew Nane Rema, who died in 2014 as a result of police brutality. Napoleon Rema lost his younger brother Andrew in 2014 after being shot by police at Waigani. Mr. Rema says to date, the family has not received the outcome of the police investigations and adds all they want is for justice to be served. Uh, but to this day's date, we haven't got any, um, any uh, response uh, from the police hierarchy uh, that the person, the culprit, the rock police officer that actually shot my brother has been uh, put behind bars. Mr. Rema expressed dissatisfaction over the current investigative system in the country. He claims authorities tasked to carry out investigations compromise each other. Uh, that's why uh, these police personnel in there are not being uh, uh, investigated and they are not uh, facing the full force of justice in our country. Mr. Rema says the investigative system in the country needs complete overhaul if justice has to be served for the innocent lives lost due to police brutality. He is appealing to the government to create an independent body to conduct investigations. There should be an independent body, committees, uh, you know, out there that uh, receives complaints. And upon the compl complaints received and upon determining the evidence at hand, must proceed to terminate, suspend, or even put behind bars, you know, if the evidence is sufficient to put this crook and rock police officers. Carolyn Ure, TV1 News. This is TV1 News. More of the day's other stories after the break.